die Melodie von der Sprache, wenn es gesprochen, strich gesungen ist, äh, erleuchtet, was, was aus welcher Gegend, aus welcher Kultur wahrscheinlich, was unpersönlich, aber auch was ganz, was mich fasziniert, ist gleichzeitig was ganz persönlich und was ganz, wie sagt man, privates. Und das ist ähm, die Laune, äh, die, die, die Anlage, was in dir drin ist, ähm, äh, wer du bist. So für mich, äh, äh, es gibt die Geschichte von, ähm, aus woher man kommt und auch aus die irdischen Geschichte ähm, von, von wer, 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 wer bist du überhaupt. Und, und das, das, diese Spannung zwischen den beiden ist sehr interessant. Wir sind nicht gerade trainiert, um das zu, zu merken. Wir, wir sind logikorientierte, äh, gehirnteilte Leute in unserer Kultur. Um, let's see, okay, die, die zweite Ding ist, um, uh, wenn jemand mit einem Akzent spricht. Es gibt, und wir kommen an das Beispiel ganz kurz. Es gibt so eine Hierarchie. Was ich, ich kenne, ich, ich respektiere diese Hierarchie, das ist besser Deutsch, schlechter Deutsch, schlimmer Deutsch, noch besser, nicht so schlecht, damals war ganz schlimm. Es gibt diese Hierarchie, absolut Respekt für diese Hierarchie, ich, 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 logisch. Um, aber es gibt auch die Linguist, Linguistin, Linguist, ein Linguist, zwei Linguisten, die sagen, es gibt Inter, Intersprache und das ist, um, es, es, es gibt Sprachen, die man sieht auf eine Sprache, aber es, es ist vielleicht unterstützt von einer ein französischen Grammatik, von einer amerikanischen Sprachmelodie, von deutschen Worten. Und das sind die Linguisten sagen um, Intersprache. Um, und uh, die Intersprache, ich, ich sehe das als eher parallel Welten. Und dann hatte ich noch eine um, sehr alte Lehrer, der fast blind war und die in die Noten geschaut hat, was einem alles für mich eigentlich ziemlich anti-musikalisch und hat die ganze Musik gebracht und die Musik ist fast zu verkassen. Ich habe Akkorde und ich habe... Uh, you made this installation with the title uh, Talking Melody, Singing Story. Yes. Um, it uses a technology, or not technology, but the technique of composing, which is uh, something very special. Mm -hmm. I heard different installation from you in this way. When did you begin to interest uh, for the melody of speaking? Um, uh, years ago, years ago, because I was, I did an installation at the Jewish Museum in, in I told, uh, the discussion was about how in, in Jewish culture, um, a visual art is, is uh, not as developed, but storytelling and music, because of the history, mm -hmm. because of the traditions, is very developed. So why don't we develop some artwork based on story and melody? And that's how this idea was born. Should we keep walking? So that that's was the first time. That's how this idea is born. You yeah. took... Yeah. Um, so that was about mm, seven years ago. You took human voice yeah, yeah. and begin on the, on the, and used the melody of the spoken language for inspiration to add instruments and musical lines to it, no? Do yes, I understand? yes, yeah. And, 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 and finding out what kind of a texture, whether it was a bassoon, a viola, a trombone, that, that, that was a good partner for the voice. The other thing too is, is that in the voice melody, um, there's what we say, uh, words, which, which has a narration, but um, there's a whole different, there, there are many different levels of narration within our voice, within our voice itself. Mm -hmm. um, where I come from, uh, partly California, partly Europe, my mother was from Vienna and she, uh, she still has a Viennese accent, so there's some of that. And that is a whole narration in, in, our, in our voices that we carry with us. It's often so that the, a person's ear it filters out a lot of information in order to get to the words. We're very logic and word oriented. What does this mean? And then so bringing out these musical qualities um, is, is, for me, it's a compositional playground, you mm -hmm. can say. Yeah. And since you uh, spend a lot of time composing around the spoken language, do you hear spoken language differently? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Just going yeah. around? Yes, yes, absolutely. I, 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 and you say, I, wow, that is a nice minor six. 
Yes, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> oh, sorry. So I'm very proud Absolutely. that uh, your yeah. installation and composition is the is the opening of our opera house. Uh -huh. We are at yeah. the Münchner Kammerspiele. Uh, this is the main hall, mm -hmm. and just opposite of the main hall, we have our opera house. Yes, let's take a look um, with the red carpet. The open booth, open yeah. booth in German. Yeah. We have to go, of course, through. And, and how, did you, how did you get the idea of this opera booth? I had different or times when I just wanted to compromise opera as small as possible. Uh -huh. Because we all know uh, that uh, also as uh, in your installation people mm -hmm. answer what is opera. It's something big, it's huge, big emotion. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get something about intimacy to be near as more as possible. But yes. that is also something else. Just on the other side of the street, there is the Bayerische Staatsoper. Yeah. And they have a huge flag where they advertise the sizes of the house. Uh -huh. Like 130 meter long, 100, not 100, uh, uh, 35 meters high. And you know, it's like dimension, dimensions. Yeah. And I came along the street uh, one of the first times as I came to the theater and I thought, wow, it would be so nice to make the same flag, but not in meters, but in centimeters. <laughs> we still didn't sweet. do the flag, but we have the house. We have the house. Yes. It's going, oh, there's somebody else. When I first saw this, I looked at this and, and, and as often with ideas that you have, you come from a different, I think you come from a different place than where I'm used to. And as often, I think, what's David trying to do? Uh, you know, this the, the this material took months to prepare, and and only a few people can sit sit here. I don't get it. I really thought that I don't get it, but I trust David because he surprised me before. <laughs> it's a mistake. Trust no, is a mistake. And, and and I must say the the idea of of reduction and 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 just looking for closeness and intimacy in while listening. And not grandiose. But your installation at the Jewish Museum was the same feeling. You mm -hmm. went into a dark room, a dark room, and um, you were alone with the music. And um, I think it's a very special experience. Mm -hmm. um, and anyway, it's always very nice. It has something from uh, um, Yamat in, in German, I don't know how you say in English. Um, or it's even something uh, from the red light milieu, from, from it's like a peep show, you were outside, yeah. it has nothing to do with uh, music, opera outside, it's a yard, and you come mm. in, you sneak in, and then it's, a, it's like a little uh, closed uh, word of something else, where you are taken out from the street. Yes. If you go into a theater, you are prepared, you have your ritual, Mm. Uh, um, clothes, yeah. uh, clothes also, but you know where you go. You have expectation. It's normal, but you it, this this uh, booth is look like from outside like a festival toilet. <laughs> so it's like yeah. absolutely not expected. And you unassuming, come in. unassuming. I guess. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. And you come in and you are in this world of opera for for short moments, and you go out and you are on the street. Mm -hmm. You don't have these rituals around. But, I like it. Yeah, I, I like it because it, it definitely has the trappings and the setting of this grand and the opera house. And the, it has the, the iconic things, the chandeliers here, the, the little statues represented, the colors of the, the chairs, the plushness. Alexandra uh, Pavlovich. Oh, okay. She, she She's great. She all the Sandra little details. Pavlovich yeah. did, the, uh, did the setting here. Um, and at the same time, it, it, it brings in people together in almost an uncomfortable intimacy to do one thing, to simply listen. Yeah. And, and, and that is such a strong statement, that, that alone. And it, it's such a simple statement that's much needed today. exactly behind talking melody singing story what idea um, well when we were talking about doing an in sound installation based on opera um, I thought of two things I thought of uh, melody and storytelling I mean that's what opera is it's telling a story um, and at the same time the work that I'm uh, interested in is is 
uh, bringing out the melody of the human voice and showing the different levels of narrative in the human voice um, almost in an anthropological way. I mean, you could really hear where a person's from, from their melody. Um, uh, but approaching that whole thing as a composer, not mm. as an a installation artist or an anthropologist or somebody interested in narrative and, and, and literature, but just as a composer. You know, it's I a was, composition. Yeah, it's a composition. Yeah, yeah. And but um, but a composer who's aware mm. that all those levels are in there, and I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so talking melody, uh, the piece is divided up as operas tend to be in aria and recitative, and um, so uh, the first half is talking melody. In other words, opera singers are talking about their earliest memories of singing. Um, why do I ask opera singers about the earliest memories of singing? Why? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> because um, I was curious about what what led them what early led them early on to become singers. What inspired them? Number one, because a question like this about childhood often inspires an emotional response rather than a how can you say a, a thought out, a planned, an academic response that you might give during a press conference. Mm -hmm. I want an emotional response in which um, I would get a, a more musical... Bo more bigger intervals. Yeah. Huh? More, more bigger intervals. Intervals. Bigger intervals. Yeah. Yes, yes. A, a, a more emotional, heartfelt response, which, which leads to a better conversation for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other thing is the, the narrative of, of growing up within melodies, of singing. The other thing is um, of, of discovering something in, in a singer who, was, who went to the Bavarian State Opera House every day, but discovering something small, just like the, the opera booth here, discovering something small and minuscule and even intimate about that person's um, identity as a singer. So all those things are, are packed in there. Mm -hmm. And using that as a compositional base. And then um, the second half of it is a singing story. And that is um, what interested us we, What interested us when we were starting the project at the uh, München Kammerspiel, uh, doing a, a year of operas here, um, is that the question while doing these experimental opera pieces what is opera? Is this still opera? Is this opera? Uh, if, if, if you take a, a, a Verdi opera and, and put in folk singers or jazz singers and have them play these roles and sing exactly these notes, is it still opera? <laughs> For yeah. example, if you take opera singers and have them sing Gershwin songs, are they jazz or Cole Porter? Is that, is that going to be jazz? So um, this question of singing story is uh, will we... Uh, we decided to ask a lot of people what, what to use opera. And the first part is people around the a Munich Kammerspiel, actors, audience members, people working here. Um, the second part is that, well, for VDR, for WDR Radio, I was in Alabama doing a radio feature about prisoners learning poetry. And I just decided to ask them what's opera, so and their answers are amazing. Um, that's the second part, and the third part, I thought of something funny, a funny element. So Italians in Berlin, that just sounds cool to me, because um, they're speaking German, they have an Italian accent, so there's a lot of melodies, mixed melodies there al already, and um, I, I I had maybe five or six um, interviews with. Italians living in Berlin about what is opera and there was one that one story that sort of just fit perfectly and and um, was so strange and fit with um, Rigoletto with the storm and the, the 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 young woman the daughter knocking on the door and and it kind of paralleled this story so I have Rigoletto in there in a very spacey way and um, so the last part of recitative is the story about um, from an Italian woman living in Berlin. So we have uh, aria and recitative. The first time I maybe 
derived some pride out of my voice uh, was this um, was this um, kids camp. I was maybe like 14. I was sent with a girl also who was um, uh, the daughter of my parents' friends. And so I had some, well, some trouble fitting in in that group. I was not used to groups.